Hello everyone and welcome to Microsoft Access 2016 Basics. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be taking a look at using logical operators with SQL. Logical operators allow us to check for multiple conditions within our where statement to determine how we want to filter our data. So for example, let's say once again we had this group of nine different individuals. We had some of them wearing blue shirts, some of them wearing red shirts, and of course some of them wearing orange shirts. But let's also add that three of these individuals, one from each group, is a manager. So now we have multiple different criteria that we might want to use to select individuals from this group. So we might add some sort of select statement here from the people table, and then we would add a where statement where we could add the OR operator here, which is a logical operator. We're saying where the shirt is orange or the shirt is blue. So you can check the shirt for multiple conditions, whether it's orange or blue. And that would, of course, select all of the individuals with an orange or blue shirt. However, we can also add another operator, the AND operator, to say also where the manager is true. So we only get those individuals who are managers and have an orange or blue shirt. One thing to note here is the parentheses around the shirt equals orange and the shirt equals blue. This essentially combines those two criteria into one. So that way we are checking that the individual could be wearing either an orange shirt or a blue shirt. And then we do a second criteria to check to see if the manager is true. If we didn't have these parentheses, we could end up with a situation where the shirt could be orange, so we get all of the orange shirted individuals, or the shirt could be blue and they are a manager. So in that case, we might get all of the orange people, all the orange shirted people, and if we got a manager that had a blue shirt. So that would be not exactly the ideal of what we were trying to do. So we group our different logical operators using these parentheses to group them according to how they should logically be separated. Let's take a look at this in an example in our Access database. So here inside of our people table, we have multiple columns that we might want to filter our users according to. So ID, first name, last name, date of birth, salary, whether or not they have an attachment, active and person type. We can filter on any of those different fields. So let's say that I wanted to create a query that's going to first filter by the person type. So I'm going to go ahead and add, uh, I'm going to go to the create tab. I'm going to select query design and let's go ahead and add the people table. And I'm going to go ahead and just show the first three fields. So that's ID, first name and last name. But then the criteria I want to filter by is this person type. Now, one of the things that we can do here is I can take this show row here and I can unselect person type. And that will make it so the person type will not appear in the result set. But it is something I can filter by. Now, for person type, I know that the criteria is the person type needs to be two. In order, to be a per, uh, in order to be a customer. We can see in our people types that two is a customer. So I only wanna show those people who are customers. So let's go ahead and go to the design tab and run this query and we'll see Shane Doe, Denise Johnson, and Joyce Reynolds. Those are our only three people who are in fact customers. Now, one of the things that we might wanna do though is say at some point, a particular customer is no longer active. So let's say Joyce Reynolds here is not active anymore. So if I unselect active, that makes her no longer active. My query will still show the same results even though I changed that data. I still show uh, Joyce here on my list. And let's say I wanna say, wait a minute, not only does, do, do I wanna show those people who are customers, but I only wanna show the active customers. So I'm gonna go back into my design view and I'm gonna add the active field, and I I'm, I'm don't wanna show it on my, on my result set, I just wanna filter according to that field. And I wanna say where active is yes. Okay, so now that I'm selecting by both these two pieces of information, the person type is two, must be a customer, and active must be true or yes, 
Then when we run this, we'll see that we only have two results. So we're only getting those customers who are active and our customers. Let's take a quick peek at the actual SQL that is written by Access when we do this. So we'll go to the SQL view, and you'll see that we have these parentheses around and and people.active as set to yes. So we have people.person type equal to, and then there's the and logical operator. Let's take this one more step though. I want to also do an or. So I'm going to go back into the design view, and I'm going to say where person type is to or one. So that would also include any employees that are active. So employees and customers, and we're excluding vendors. So that should go ahead and add Jane Tollison to the list. So now when we go back to our query, design, run, we now see Jane Tollison, who even though Jane is not a customer, Jane is an employee and is active. And once again, if we go back to the SQL view, we'll see that it has added the or logical operator to our pers uh, people person type equals one. Now things can get really goofy based upon how you do the parentheses. So I'm gonna remove all of the parentheses here from our statement and get rid of all of them. This takes a little bit to do. So here we're gonna say where person type equals two and people active is yes, or person type equals one. Now, what kind of results do you think we're going to get when we do this? Because I'm specifying, could it be read either person type is equal to and also include those records where people is active is set to true or their person type is one. So basically getting everybody who is person type one and person type two, uh, or are we saying that we wanna get person type two and they have to be active or anybody of person type one? So this could be read multiple different ways and it's sometimes not entirely clear what your intentions are for these logical operators. So if we run this, we may not get the results that we're necessarily looking for. Now we did in this case because of the order. Let's try moving some things around. Let's just do or person type one. Let's try doing that way. Well, now we've got completely different results, okay? Just because of the order that we've placed these operations. So it's really a good idea to add parentheses around grouped ideas. So we wanna say where person type is uh, one or two and they have to also be active. And now when we run this, we're back down to just the three. And that's simply because we use those parentheses to properly group our reasoning around these logical operators. I'd like to thank these individuals for your continued support in being a member of this channel. Without your assistance, this channel would not be possible. Thank you. Yeah.